Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello, good morning friends, welcome to the second lecture of the introduction to science fiction series. I know all of us are very much excited to gather more and more information and knowledge about science fiction. Today, we have also seen why the science fiction entire genre is very much important for every one of us to be a part of in this 21st century. So in this lecture, we are going to understand, approach science fiction as a genre, a subgenre rather. So in order to do that, we have to first understand what is a genre, what makes genre as it is. Let me tell you, there is also another part of, uh, let me tell you, there is also another part of this aspect that is speculative fiction we have discussed speculative fiction in the previous lecture but not in details but in this lecture that is lecture 2 we are going to understand science fiction as a speculative fiction a sub genre of speculative fiction now there is a very interesting thing over here genre is also alternatively pronounced as genre or simply as genre but preferably we would say genre now what we are going to do in this lecture let us have a look at that approaching science fiction as a subgenre now here we have the word genre as you can see and from the mwd merriam webster's dictionary we have taken the meaning let us have a look at that the category of artistic musical or literary composition characterized by a particular style form or content. This entire definition that we have gathered from Merriam-Webster's dictionary points towards one thing that is there is a uniformity, a kind of uniformity that creates a grouping. Suppose you are watching a movie which has a lot of thriller elements, action elements where the hero is fighting with the villain and there is a damsel in distress a girl needs to be saved and you will of course continue to tell about that movie to your friends as an action movie. When you use that word action movie, you are actually referring to the genre of action movie. Then there is this wonderful love story about a young teenager falling in love with another young teenager. Then you consider that story as belonging to the romance genre that this story is about romance. If there are elements of tragedy, something bad happens to a person, suffering, loss, pain, grief, agony, everything you consider it as belonging to the tragic genre. And if it is a funny element, like most of us know that there are movies entire, in this entire uh, movie scape, about funny incidents like in India we have Hera Peri and Golmal, Dhamal, all these movies they combine and form the comic genre. So if we sum it all up, whatever art that is created, whatever music that is created when it belongs to a particular style, for example some music you call classical, some you call pop, some you call rock because all of them have different kind of musical expression somewhere the drums are very high somewhere the voice is given the uh, utmost importance so in those cases you fix a kind of genre for that particular item of art or musical or literary composition they have a particular style they have a particular form and of course the content is also very important so in case of science fiction, how do we understand uh, a genre? Okay, so David Seed 
is a person who is very much vocal about the history, about the progression of science fiction studies, who were there, what did they do, what did they write, what did they foresee, foretell, what are the things they discussed before it even happened. So, in all of these things, when David Seed writes in his Cambridge Companion paper or in his book of science fiction, he defines that it is a genre of speculative fiction, a mode or field where different genres and subgenres intersect. Now, under this entire umbrella of speculative fiction, he says that genres and subgenres intersect. Intersection is like one way is going this and the other way is going this. So, this particular is the point of intersection. So, why is he saying that? Why is he saying that science fiction is an um, intersection of different genres and subgenres? Because when we read a work of science fiction, there are elements of romance, there are elements of tragedy, comedy, all these genres meet in the science fiction domain. So, not necessarily that it should be all about scientific experiments, people creating deadly viruses, people uh, destroying worlds, alien invasion, it shouldn't be all of those at all. What instead he says is that when suppose there is a story where there is a, a journey to a different planet, one species journeys to a different planet and meets the people of that planet, enjoys the culture, learns something, reflects on the importance of society, community bonding and also falls in love with another person in that particular planet. So can you say that it is only science fiction? It is not possible. Then you will have to say that it has elements of romance, it has elements of thrill, it has elements of tragedy, comedy, everything because life is full of that. So if we want to understand uh, science fiction, we will just have to look at life from a different perspective. Here is a list which covers all the different media. Now let me tell you about media. Media is a plural word. The singular word is medium. Medium, what does this word mean? This word means that medium this word means whatever you when there are two things and in between there is something which carries message from one point to the other from one thing to the other so the in between kind of thing is medium so there is an idea of a story but the story is told in the form of a fiction the story is told in the form of poetry the story is expressed in the form of drama all of those things ca are, can be considered as a medium. Science fiction has all those mediums inside it. Most importantly, the last two, computer games. We will be discussing or introducing you to the idea of computer games. Nowadays, it is very common. All of us have a um, device from which we can access games, games which will uh, we play on our laptop, on our PCs, on the uh, mobile phone that we carry and everywhere you will find that the high definition games, the uh, story uh, storyboarding games, the games that have an inbuilt story within it has elements of science fiction. Somewhere an alien species is invading another alien species and you are the one who is going to fight from one side that game has elements of science fiction where you have devised some uh, gateway or pathway to a different world and you are traveling interstellar, you are traveling from one galaxy to the another galaxy. So all of those things that are not possible in today's world but you have imagined that because you are a part of that game, you are imagining yourself as a character. Therefore, that game you are playing is a part of the entire science fiction cosmos. It carries in it with, uh, within itself. And lastly, the most popular and influential movies. 
a lot of science fiction movies have been uh, in the market recently commercial non commercial if you just open netflix amazon prime or any ott platform that you have all of those platforms carry a separate separate uh, heading called science fiction fantasy and in that you will find movies like the terminator ex machina um lost in space that is one of the most uh, um controversial uh, one of the most popular science fiction series you will find uh, christopher nolan's brother jorathan nolan series uh, which is called west world in it everywhere you will find huge huge amounts of expression of science fiction elements so we will discuss all these genres and sub genres with you now let us go to the particular idea of speculative fiction because science fiction is a kind of speculative fiction what do we mean when we say speculative so this is the word the root word is speculate to meditate on or ponder a subject pondering wondering what this subject really means how far we can think about it let us be philosophers for some time imagine that there is a point of information how much can you understand from that information imagine a situation like somebody gave you a glass of water when you were thirsty and from that single moment you started thinking what does it mean what does it mean because if somebody gave me a glass of water that means that person is kind if somebody has given me the glass of water when i'm thirsty that means that person understands that i'm thirsty that a person is not only kind but also intelligent and you were thirsty because of the atmosphere environment not other people noticed but that person noticed is it a kind of uh, mutual understanding that you had with that person when the person looked at you and saw that you were thirsty and offered you a glass of water so the entire situation that is you are imagining in your head that is speculation that is meditation when you close your eyes and contemplate think about your life what are the decisions that you have taken why you have taken them can you take them again or will you take them again if that situation comes so all those things that you imagine and meditate and um think on is a part of speculation speculative fiction so what when this approach is applied to fiction what do we actually mean a genre that encompasses imaginative and fantastical elements exploring alternate realities futuristic settings and supernatural elements so fantastical elements alternative realities futuristic settings and supernatural elements we are going to discuss one by one first of all fantastical elements you are thinking about a deadly virus that can turn people into zombies you are thinking about a very fine spacecraft that can move from one galaxy to another galaxy within the blink of an eye you are also thinking about a beast that can change its shape in this current world none of them are true they do not exist in this current world but still you can think about it that this is a possibility you are also imagining that you have grown wings you can fly you are also imagining that you can have a kind of effect on people that you can read their minds and compel them to do whatever you want all of these things are fantastical they are a part of fantasy that you want this thing to be true but it is not but still you can write or compose art in this particular field all these elements are fantastical the ghost stories that you have been reading the um, harry potter series the lord of the ring series everywhere every story that contains the element of magic that you are just waving around a wand like this and things are happening abracadabra everything 
around that genre is fantastical. So, fantasy is something that you wish it were true, but it isn't. You have a bag which has, whenever you put your hand inside it and you think, I want this, and that thing comes out of the bag. That bag is a fantasy. You think of it that it will have, uh, it could have made my life so much better. So all these elements that we imagine in our daily life and we also create art and literature, stories, movies, series based on those imagination, all of them carry fantasy, the fantastical elements. Now we will talk about alternate realities. What is alternate? Alternate is one is this and this is the alternate. If I have a career of teaching, I could have had an alternate career of coaching. If I have a life in this world, I could have had a life in a different world. When the reality around us changes and is uh, we are given an option that there is also another reality. Suppose this is my life. My life is going like this and I have made something out of my life at this point of time. But in an alternative life, which is also happening simultaneously, I am a thief. I am a criminal. If I consider myself as a criminal, I am breaking rules and laws, I am fighting people, I have become a mugshot. All of these things are very imaginative, creative. That is alternate reality. Everywhere we have this kind of uh, ideas present in the art forms. What if I had not become a teacher? I could have become a criminal mastermind. I could have become a criminal mastermind. So all these possibilities that we play with in our head in the form of ideas, they are alternate realities. You here are students. Had you not been a student of science fiction, you could have been a student of science. You could have been a student of the most dangerous criminal in the world. You could have been a student of devil. All of these things are a part of alternate realities. You could have been the president of that country. You are running a government of your own. You are creating a country of your own. These are parts of alternate realities. Futuristic settings. What will happen in the future? We today here are experiencing a phase of AI revolution, artificial revolution, where you don't even need to do anything. You just train a machine, they will do it for you. The time comes when the AI will become sentient. They will have a mind of their own. They will have feelings. What will you do then? This is also a fantasy that we have in our mind and that fantasy has created entire series of literature work, uh, literary work, uh, movies, every genre has this AI component nowadays that the machines have uh, gained sentience, they have gained the self-awareness that yes I am a machine and I am going to kill all the humans. So all those things are futuristic. That yes, in 2099, we will have a machine that will declare war on the human race. So that is us speculating about the future. What has the future in store for us? Supernatural elements. This is also a very, very interesting part of uh, speculation. That is the magical realm, the supernatural, the uh, involvement of gods, goddesses, demons, Satan, every religious elements that you can imagine along with the pagan elements that you can imagine. Pagan means uh, whatever uh, Christianity actually derives the term pagan. Uh, the people uh, who believe in the faith of Christianity, they considered uh, the people who did not believe in the faith of Christianity as pagans. So, According to Christian reality, 
those the Jews they are pagans, the tribals they are pagans, all of the uh, entire population of the world are pagans. So it is just a um, colloquial word now. So pagan is somebody with a non-standard kind of religion. So all of these things are a part of supernatural elements that the God will curse, thunderbolts will come flying from the sky, there will be a magic. Of course, in the Harry Potter series that you see, they have a wand and they are hitting each other, fighting with the dark forces, with the magic. They are cursing. They are also drinking potions, mixing and uh, they are putting inside ingredients from all sorts of things. After drinking the potion, their uh, shape changes. They become a cat. They become a, a flying horse. All those things happen. So all these are considered as supernatural elements because they are not either explained by science, they are a part of fantasy. Now we will have a look at the importance of such kind of speculative fiction. Number one provides a creative space for authors to explore ideas. Whoever authors, writers belonging to the genre, they have a vast range of ideas. I am sure you looking at this uh, presentation right now, you might have ideas. Yes, I thought of something like this before but never got the chance to express. So now it is your chance to take up the pen or rather maybe the keypad and start typing, start writing, contribute. Your ideas make a difference. If you have very innovative ideas, somebody, some scientist somewhere will be very much inspired by them and will try to build something according to your ideas. So uh, exploring ideas is a very healthy exercise for the mind. Challenge norms. If somebody says no, this is the normal. At one time, people did not want technology to interfere with their day-to-day -day lives. They thought the TV is bad. TV is still bad anyway. But the computer, the internet, it revolutionized the outlook of people. It made communication so easy. The normal that we had one day that if I live in India and my uh, relatives live in US, I can only call them at a particular time with a lot of charges. But now that has become almost free because we can just press a button in our phone and we talk to them on a video call. So it is almost uh, in a fraction of seconds that happens. This is the new norm. This is the new normal. So had the idea of talking face to face did not have come inside the mind of somebody, this app would not have been devised. This pathway could not have been sought. So now we have something that challenges the normals. Someday we will be also having holograms in our house. Holograms are now not a very uh, popular device where you can not only see them in 2D, not only inside a screen, you will be looking at them in 3D because that particular device will project light in such a way that you will see them walking around doing all their work and talking to you. So that will be a normal in future. Examine the human condition in unique and thought-provoking ways. Whenever you think of a human condition, you might want to look at the life that surrounds you. Whenever we see that there are a lot of people who are suffering due to lack of medical treatment because medical treatment is very, very costly, someday there will be a situation when medical treatment will no longer be costly and it will be available to all people because the technology will advance. So that entire situation will be better. So unless and until we feel the need to make the world like that, think in our head what it would be, visualize it. Once we visualize that, then the only thing that is left is planning and execution. So we, the people contributing to the field of science fiction, contributing to the field of ideas, 
we are going to make that we are going to show the world that this can be a reality and then only people will start working towards it so thought provoking ways now here is a very interesting thing hard science fiction and softer science fiction you will be very much uh, happy to know that science fiction is not always about science it has the elements of science somewhere the science element is 75 percent somewhere the science element is just 25 percent out of the 100 percent area of the literary work now let us have a look at this uh, particular excerpt from a very short introduction to science fiction by david seed writers attempted to tie this fiction to science and even to use it as a means of promoting scientific knowledge, a position which continues into what has become known as hard SF. So the entire concept of hard science fiction was initially for promoting scientific knowledge. It is a very common thing that science is not for everybody. This is a common belief. But let me tell you otherwise, this is no longer the reality of our world. All of us need to know science nowadays. Even if you are a student of arts, even if you are a student of commerce, you must have a basic worldview, a scientific worldview. You must know a little bit of coding. You must know a little bit of computer technologies because that is the future. Computers are going to be everywhere. If you or I or anybody around you do not keep up then we will fall behind opportunities will be given to those who are going to keep up so science has now according to the uh, national education policy 2020 i'm sure all of us know that science uh, an art student can also opt for uh, science subjects for their minor courses so it is no more a restricted category you can um, uh, learn a little bit of science and apply it in your day-to-day -day life. So hard science fiction are those works of art and literature which promoted scientific knowledge. Anybody who read a science fiction story or novel or comics or saw a science fiction movie, they saw that there are machines, there are devices that can take you from one place to another within a blink of an eye. There are automatic weapons there are uh, portals in the space that happens so a person who has never read that much higher physics or uh, interstellar physics is not very much acquainted with astrophysics will never understand what is a warp drive will never understand what is a wormhole will not have an idea about a black hole but once you have seen a movie once you have read a comics that person is going to have some kind of idea oh we have we have rockets that go from one place to another we have spaceships that go from one place to another we have something called wormholes warp drives that folds time and space it's a very interesting concept so that person will also go and study let me see what is happening in order to understand the movie or the particular piece of literature so all those are considered as hard science fiction because they are also telling us about how that thing is going to happen science is not always how we discuss reality because in our world's reality we have never seen a black hole how do we then even imagine I'm sure all of us know about Stephen Hawkins. Stephen Hawkins is a person who gave the theory of a black hole, that black hole is going to be like this. Also gave the idea of wormhole. The wormhole is going to be like this. But he had never seen it. He only did the math. He did the math of the astrophysics and said that this is what is going to happen. And later on, nowadays, we have pictures from NASA confirming the fact that yes there is something as black hole you see this is the event horizon this is the place where the black hole is all of these things are now visible to us so now let us move on to understanding that in 1957 p shiller miller in a review of john w campbell's 
islands of space introduced the concepts of FTL and warp drive. FTL means faster than light. This is a concept that is very interesting. Nothing travels faster than light, at least to our common knowledge. We have never seen an element that can travel faster than light, but he, John W. Campbell, discussed about the travel of warp drives, which are actually machines that can travel faster than light. And the entire concept of traveling faster than light was first time introduced in islands of space. So this is what Schuller Miller understood as hard science fiction, that this has concepts of science which has not been discussed previously. It is so creative, it is so imaginative. The day we find a particle, the day we find any element that can travel faster than light waves, that day we will be able to create warp drive. That day we will be able to travel from one galaxy to another galaxy within the blink of an eye. So in astounding science fiction, this is a kind of journal where uh, this particular story was published, Islands of Space. In that particular astounding science fiction is a journal where the review of the Islands of Space story was published in 1957. So the term hard science fiction comes from that time. So what are the differences? Hard science fiction belong to natural science, the study of astrophysics, the study of different natural phenomena that are happening, the study of tornadoes, the movies based on that, the move, you will have movies like Twister, you will have movies like The Core, all of these things have considered uh, the uh, idea of actual scientific facts. For example, Mike and Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park. I'm sure all of us know about this famous movie Jurassic Park where the dinosaurs come to life and everybody goes to that park to enjoy. Sadly, the dinosaurs are let loose and they eat everybody, try attacks the children, attacks the mob, but finally are put down by the hero. Christopher Nolan's Interstellar. Alfonso Curran's Gravity. All of these three movies, they have elements of hard science fiction. Here it is the DNA replication. Because dinosaurs are extinct, you cannot actually create a dinosaur. But there they are saying that the DNA was kept, was preserved inside small mosquitoes who drank the blood of dinosaurs and those mosquitoes was fossilized from that mosquito the DNA was extracted and the entire species of dinosaurs were replicated in this world. Christopher Nolan's Interstellar. Interstellar has elements of hard science fiction. What it would be to travel from one planet to another planet, from one galaxy to another galaxy to pass by a black hole that is a very big gravitational field. So all of these things, how will the time run? How will the space look? Everything has been imagined in this particular movie, Interstellar. Alfonso Cuaron's Gravity. Gravity has won Oscars. You will love to see the movie if you go and just have a look at it. It is a very picturesque movie. An astronaut uh, in space suffers some kind of instrumental uh, problems and the entire spaceship is going to burst. So that astronaut jumps from the space into the earth and makes use of gravity so that she does not die. It's a very interesting story and the science is so accurate that it is termed as one of the hard science fiction movies. What are soft sci-fi? So social sciences like anthropology, psychology, social sciences like also sociology, all those fields has softer science fiction aspects. For example, the Terminator. It is very fantastical. A robot from the future comes to the present and tries to save a person. This is not realistic. We cannot reverse time. We cannot come back from the future. But the idea is there 
that robot is in the form of a human and it tries to protect a kid. Alex Garland's Ex Machina, where an AI in the form of a woman becomes sentient and it is programmed to escape the facility and it does so very accurately. But we know it is also fantastical because uh, the AIs are still not sentient and never will be but, uh, due to the inherent programming. But it is very interesting to see how the AI manipulates the person. Michael Bay's The Island. The Island movie, it has the story of clones. They try, the clones are kept in a secret facility. They are bred over there. They are, after, after a particular time, they are harvested. Their organs are harvested because the person who they have been cloned from, that person has organ failure. So, you have to now give the organs. This particular movie considers social issues of uh, organ harvesting, organ trafficking, all those things are over there. So, the main idea is the slaves are revolting against the masters. So, this dynamics is there. So, the science fiction part is very very limited but the drama, the story, the bathos that it creates, the bathos that it creates, all of these things are more important. So, let us have a look at all the sub-genres of speculative fiction. Science fiction, we are discussing science fiction, focuses on futuristic technology, space exploration, aliens, a very interesting part is aliens. We have a full lecture on that, so please don't miss it out. Scientific advancements. This is the uh, range of science fiction that we still encompass. There are much more, but these are the major areas. Fantasy. It is also, it is also a subgenre of speculative fiction. Involves magical elements, mythical creatures, like Dracula, I'm sure you have all of us have heard of heard about vampires. Vampire uh, does not exist; it is a mythical creature. But nowadays, you go and see Twilight Saga. You have wonderful movies based on vampires like Van Helsing. Everywhere you find this fascinating character of a person, and let me tell you, the vampires are made to look very physically attractive so that they can very silently go and seduce their preys, bring them and drink their blood. So, all the stories are about this mythical creature who never dies. Okay, epic quests in fictional worlds. So, there are various stories like this. Best example in today's world is Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, you will find that there is a person called Frodo. Frodo is taking one of the rings and going from one journey to another in search of that particular place where Frodo can deposit the ring and the ring will be destroyed and the entire empire of the dark forces of Sauron will be destroyed. All of the story is like an epic quest. You will also have the uh, series of Game of Thrones where the uh, winter soldiers, the cold uh, war, everybody is coming and attacking the uh, people living in that particular area. The dead, uh, the dead has gathered forces and now they are um, fighting with the living. They want to overtake the world of the living. Men there are mythical elements, dragons and pixies. All those elements are over there. So, you will find it a very interesting story the Game of Thrones. Next is horror. Explores macabre, supernatural, terrifying aspects of human experience. Anytime you select and want to watch a zombie movie, you will find dead people moving around with injuries, uh, blood coming off their head and they are a uh, mouth full of blood because they are going and uh, biting other people. These sorts of images that you have in on the movie or inside a fiction those are the elements of macabre or gore it is something like bloody very unpleasant to look at you will not be able to uh, concentrate 
on anything else you will be uh, having nightmares for example if you remember the movie the mummy there are small insects that go inside your skin and they eat all the flesh inside your skin and this and that after watching that perhaps you will miss out sleep for one or two weeks and you will be afraid of the dark i was as a kid so i am sharing that experience with you so those are macabre elements supernatural the mummies coming back from the dead fighting with the living the gods of egypt everywhere the supernatural elements are um, playing all the roles the avengers you will find thor the son of odin all belonging to the norse mythology you study norse mythology you will find the character of thor thor in the avengers is actually a god so thor has his brother loki and his sister uh, helena all these things are a part of that god family all these are supernatural elements and thor is the god of thunder by the way terrifying aspects of human experience somewhere some person develops a kind of disease and that person is crippled forever or has flesh dropping off from his body all these things are a part of this horror series and of course i will not have to tell you the horror movies scream psycho then um the nun the exorcist let me tell you a fun fact when the exorcist was released exorcist is a horror movie the director bet that anybody who can watch the movie sitting alone in the theater i will give that uh, person $1000 and nobody could watch it let me tell you it's so horrific an experience then you have dystopian dystopian is a genre where the world is seen from a very bleak angle suppose some day the artificial intelligence does does take over us we are reduced to you know living in very poor conditions we have become the slave of the machines that is a dystopian society some day a world which does not have all the freedom that we live in some day when there we are forced to uh, become something lesser than human beings that is a dystopian society in a society where we are forbidden to read in a society where our function is just to serve the master in a society where human beings are considered just as uh, bodies moving around you can kill anybody you can uh, uh, grab any uh, property belonging to anybody and run away that is a dystopian society that is not something very good so all of these things oppressive societies and nightmarish futures they all together uh, make up the dystopian world alternative history this part is very interesting alternative history is reimagines historical events what if hitler was never born what if there was no corona virus what if there was some deadly virus which is more attacking than corona virus what if suddenly a asteroid from space comes and hits the earth and half of the population is dead so the entire what if literature creates the alternative history what if the world wars never happened what if there were 10 world wars instead of two so this is very interesting whenever we want to see history from a different angle we think of history from the perspective of our uh, imagination what if india and pakistan were never divided what if there was no religion but only one religion throughout the entire world the world would have been a different place so all these things are part of speculative fiction here is a list of science fiction from various genres and this is the list of the classics you can have a look at all of these hg wells j r r tolkien mary shelley ray bradbury ursula k leguin these are the maestros of 
uh, science fiction there are also the big three which i will specially devote an entire lecture to so the big three of science fiction i am not mentioning here uh, they are arthur c clark robert heinlein these are the authors that come under the big three um, of science fiction so we will discuss them later so these are from various genres hg wells sometimes also called the father of science fiction for works like the war of the worlds where one alien species comes and attacks our world and tries to eat all the human beings then the time machine the time machine has finally been discovered now you can fast forward yourself and go to the future or you can go to the past all these things are part of that j r r tolkien renowned for his epic fantasy series the lord of the rings so this is not a science fiction this is an epic fantasy see we discussed that we are going to talk about various genres so oh, these are the different genres that we are talking about so the first one is a science fiction belonging to the science fiction genre the second is epic fantasy the lord of the rings the third is also a science fiction novel that is frankenstein in frankenstein which was released in the 1800 you will find that german scientist victor frankenstein tries to resurrect a dead person by using natural thunder and electrocuting that body so the person is actually not one person but uh, made from different body parts st stitched together and made to function as one it's a, again a very macabre kind of story dystopian novel fahrenheit 451 it is a very sad kind of future where everybody is forbidden to read books and the hero in fahrenheit 451 that person is actually a fireman he is ordered by the government to go into houses find all the books and burn them go into libraries find all the books and burn them there we find that this person was actually not burning all the books they he was stealing one or two books from each pile some day his wife understands that this person is hiding books inside his cupboard the wife goes and reports him to the authorities one day the authorities are on the gate and the fireman's house is set in set on fire so this is a very different kind of society thinking about which makes us sad and angry both lastly is ursula k le guin's uh, thought provoking science fiction and fantasy writings including the left hand of darkness it is a story of a different planet where the residents are ambisexual or androgynous they do not have a specific sex or they are neither male nor female or they are male as well as female so a person visiting from a different planet who has a specific sexual idea about the body is not able to understand the culture what is happening in this planet how can be a person uh, also uh, how can be one single person uh, male as well as female so this is a cultural commentary on the idea of sex and gender written by ursula k le guin yes this is a list of the very very famous movies on science fiction you must go and watch them consider the ideas play with them in your head and i will give you a list inception released in 2010 a mind bending film follows a thief who enters the dreams of others to steal their secrets it combines action heist and science fiction elements interstellar 2014 an epic space exploration film follows a group of astronauts as they search for a new habitable planet to save humanity from a dying earth ex machina 2014 these are the release dates remember so all these are very very recent movies and ideas that has been expressed through the uh, uh, genre of 
science fiction. The first one is, you see, enters the dreams. Okay, it contains action, heist. The second one is space exploration. The third one is artificial intelligence. So these are all different, belonging to different genres, but they are all under science fiction. Gravity, this is released in 2013. A visually stunning film follows two astronauts stranded in space after their shuttle is destroyed and their struggle to survive. So this is exactly what David Seed called as intersection where various genres intersect somewhere it is dreams and science fiction somewhere it is space and science fiction whereas somewhere it is uh, planetary travel interplanetary travel and science fiction so all the ideas are intersecting with the idea of science fiction so this is the point where all the stories are being written. This is another part of all the uh, belonging to the list. Also, let us have a look at it. The Martian released in 2015, an adaptation of Andy Weir's novel. It was actually a novel in the beginning. Then the movie was adapted from that story. Tells the story of an astronaut survival on Mars after being presumed dead and left behind by the crew. Edge of Tomorrow this is one of my personal favorites because it has Tom Cruise. He is one of the best action heroes the industry, the movie industry has ever seen. An action-packed science fiction film involves a soldier caught in a time loop. So the time keeps on repeating itself, only the soldier changes his strategy. Relieving the same battle against an alien invasion. Her. This is also one of my favorites. An unconditional love story revolves around a man who falls in love with an advanced operating system designed to meet his every need. The Tomorrow War. It is one of the most recent releases. An action-packed science fiction film follows soldiers from the present who are transported to the future to fight an alien invasion threatening humanity. So it not only has the story of a father meeting his daughter, it also has the time travel idea. Free Guy, an action comedy. See, the genre is comedy now. Free Guy has science fiction elements. It follows a non-player character in a video game who gains self-awareness and begins to question his reality. So, remember we discussed earlier about alternative realities. This particular character in a video game his reality is that of the video game's reality. But once he begins to question the nature of reality around him, he understands that there is also a reality outside the video game. We will very briefly discuss why uh, speculative fiction is so popular. Film and television, the popularity of speculative fiction is evident in numerous blockbuster movies. TV series across genres. People flock the movie theaters anytime a movie from the Marvel Universe or the DC Universe releases. The Avengers movie, Spider Man, Iron Man, all the movies releases every time people go to the theaters and watch the CGI computer graphics. Gaming, speculative fiction themes are prevalent in video games often immersing players in fantastical worlds and adventure. Nintendo was one of those games and now we have mind blocks. There are many games where you can design your own entire civilization. So that also gives you an idea of creating an alternate reality inside the computer. So that reality belongs to you, gives you an idea that you have created that land comic books and graphic novels. Superheroes and science fiction stories are prominent in all the comic book media. Me, comic book is for expressing ideas which cannot be expressed through stories. They need to have a visual. Whenever you take a comic book, you will see people fighting one another. There will be 
um, bubbles carrying multiple messages and mostly they have the supernatural or speculative elements in them. Fan communities, speculative fiction has a passionate and engaged fan base. You just go to Google and search Harry Potter fan magazines. You will see that there are lots and lots, thousands of people around the globe writing alternative stories of Harry Potter, creating, developing their characters, writing different timelines, different realities of the same characters. The character remain the same, the story keeps on changing. So all the fans, they are creating their own stories. Now, lastly, we will come why speculative fiction, why we must study speculative fiction because they have an impact on the society. They inspire innovation. We think about them and we also try to think what more we can add to it. Real world scientific advancement and technological innovations. Somebody somewhere like Leonardo da Vinci has uh, designed some helicopter. He did not invent it. But later on the Wright brothers, they invented the aeroplane, the flying machine. Right. So, it is not only a person's ideas, but the person's inspiration that carries forward a generation. Empathy. By exploring diverse worlds and characters, we encourage empathy and understanding. Once we think about a world where different aliens live, we go interact with them. We find that they are kind, we are kind, we share a culture. We also try to understand their realities. When a person watches this movie like that, when a person reads a book like that, that person also develops empathy. Yes, if I meet somebody who does not belong to my race, does not belong to my community, I am also going to be very kind to them. And of course, challenging preconceptions. Speculative fiction challenges societal norms and prejudices, encouraging critical thinking and open-mindedness. Whenever we read speculative fiction, I will give you a very, very good example of uh, speculative fiction that has these kind of element that is Kazuo Ishiguro's Never let me go. It is a novel and we will be discussing about that novel uh, in later lectures. It has that critical thinking part very deeply inside the novel. The story itself is so much thought provoking. It is about cloning and a clone reflects on the type of life she is having. She, she thinks that she is the option at life for the original donor, the person who has donated his or her DNA. That person is having a second chance at life, but the clones, they do not have a second chance at life. So it's very uh, thought provoking and also keeps us on our toes. Now we have quiz time. Let us Take a few questions, try to understand what are the things that we have gained from this lecture. What do you understand by the term genre? Give some examples and see whether you can understand or we, you can uh, share your understanding in pen or paper or discuss it with anybody. What are the media forms that science fiction encompass? Always give examples while answering these kind of questions. Is science fiction related to the field of speculative fiction? How? What do you mean by speculation? Can you give me a, a kind of situation example? Discuss it with your friends. Who first introduced the concepts of FTL travel method and warp drive space cap propulsion system in science fiction? Differentiate between hard science fiction and softer science fiction. You can give a lot of examples and you can also have a look at these two lists over here 
and try to identify which can be categorized as hard science fiction and as soft science fiction. So now we have an idea if you have any questions or queries just have a look at the book by David Seed. These are some reference works which will be very helpful for you. Speculative Fiction, Oxford Research Encyclopedia of Literature, David Seed, Science Fiction, a very short introduction. I personally find this book very insightful because it is a very small book and has a lot of things in it. Clayton David, What Makes Hard Science Fiction Hard? Hartwell David G, Carmer Catherine, Introduction, New People, New Places, New Politics, The Hard Science Fiction Renaissance and Anthology. So this is the name of the book and this is the name of the chapter. Cheryl Wint, Science Fiction, The MIT Press. So these are very, very good places to look for, hunt for information and look at the history of science fiction, which we will be taking up in the next lecture. So it will be a very uh, time covering, time encompassing lecture. I hope we have learnt a lot of things from this one. Looking forward to the next one. Thank you very much.